Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can recover and improve tones in your images to make them much more punchy and eye-catching. Here's our start image and as you can see it's looking a little flat, the colours are a bit faded, the sky's lacking in detail and the whole scene's slightly overexposed. But there's a lot more detail inside this digital file than at first you may think and this is because it was shot in RAW which ensures the highest possible quality from your camera. Now we're going to use Adobe's powerful plugin, Adobe Camera Raw, which comes as standard with Photoshop CS, to recover and enhance the tones. And we'll end up with something that looks like this, where we've brought back some detail in the sky and improved the colours and added a touch of contrast and sharpening. Now, if you have Photoshop Elements, you also have a version of Adobe Camera Raw, but it's slightly more pared down than the Photoshop CS version. And as a result, you don't have some of the key tools that we're going to use here, like the graduated filter tool, which we've used to selectively darken the sky. So if you are using Elements, that's just a quick heads up that you will have to complete the tutorial by opening the file into Photoshop and then using adjustment layers and gradients to darken the sky. But I'm going to show you how to do it using Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop CS5. So this is my raw edit start.dng file. I'm going to right click on that and choose open in Camera Raw. And you can also do this with TIFF files and even JPEGs to open them into ACR. So here we are in the main ACR interface and you can see we have a selection of different panels along the top of the screen here on the right. And by default, we've gone to the basic panel, which is the ideal place to begin most image edits. And that's because you have a selection of really useful sliders here that we can use to enhance and improve the tones. Now, we'll start at the top here with the white balance settings. And you can see we have a temperature and a tint slider. We can drag the temperature manually to the left or the right here. If we drag to the left, that will cool our image down. We can drag to the right to warm the image up. Alternatively, we can use the presets in the drop down here. And I'm going to choose the daylight preset. And even if you don't end up using these presets, they can be really helpful as a starting point for making further tweaks to the temperature and tint sliders. Now I'm going to move on to the exposure slider here. I'm just going to hold Alt and click on the slider to give me a view of the image. And this tells me where the clipped pixels are in the image. And I can use the recovery slider to recover those clipped pixels. So if I hold Alt and click on the recovery slider, I'll get a similar view. And if I drag that to the right here while holding Alt, you can see those areas begin to disappear. So I'm going to set it to about 23. And that's recovered those blown out highlights. Now I'm going to move on to the black slider. And if I hold Alt and click on this slider, this will give me a slightly different view. And now this is telling me any pixels that are being clipped to pure black. So at the moment, we don't have any clipped pixels. If I continue dragging that to the right here, the areas that show up in black are the ones that are starting to be clipped to pure black. So I'm just going to set that around 10 just to add some depth to the shadow areas around here. I'm also just going to reduce contrast slightly to about plus 10 and then move on to the vibrant slider. And we'll set that at about plus 20, plus 22, somewhere around there. I think it will be fine. And because we're using the vibrant slider instead of the saturation to boost colours, what we're doing is enhancing the less saturated colours in the image. So in this way, we're leaving all of the uh, yellows in the field there untouched and we're enhancing the blue sky. And we can improve the sky more by making selective adjustments to darken it down. Now there's two tools we can use for this. You have the adjustment brush, which works well if you want to paint in an area to adjust. Or we can use the graduated filter tool. And this is better for images like this where we have a clearly defined sky and land and it's a fairly level horizon. So I'm going to use the graduated filter tool. If I click on that, you can see I get a set of sliders over here that I can use to darken down the area affected by the graduated filter. So you can see I have exposure set to minus one. Now I'm going to click about halfway down the sky here, hold the mouse button down and then drag down towards the land. And you can see the area above the green line is being completely affected. The area between the green and the red lines is the blend area. And the area below the red line is remaining unaffected. 
And if I hold shift while I'm dragging, so I've got the shift button and the mouse button held down, you can see that snaps my line to be perfectly vertical. And that gives me a nice horizontal line that kind of matches my horizon. So I'm going to drag down to about there and then release. And then I can use these sliders over here to make further adjustments. So I'm going to knock the exposure back even further to about minus 1.35. And I'm also going to use the saturation slider here to boost the blues in the sky. I'm going to bring that up to about plus 30. And I think that's really working to improve that sky. And the great thing about this tool, and this is true with any tool or any setting you use in ACR, it's never set in stone. So even if I go back, say, to my basic panel, I can click back on the tool here, the graduated filter tool, and then click on my gradient there, and I can adjust it if I like. I can tweak any of these sliders here, adjust the blend area in, a, in any way I like. So any change that you do make in ACR is completely non-destructive. Now, because we've darkened the sky, you may have noticed there's a few sensor marks lurking around the top right corner here. So I'm going to grab the zoom tool and just zoom in on that area. And then I'm going to grab the spot removal tool from the tools panel up here. And you can see in my settings on the right here, I have type heal with opacity 100%. We don't need to worry about radius because once we click and drag over a sensor mark, you can see we get a circle like this. And when I release the mouse button, a second circle appears, and this is the source area. I could drag this around. I can drag my main point around as well if I want to adjust that, but obviously I want it over my sensor mark there. And I'm just going to continue to get rid of these other sensor marks. Let's just get rid of these ones here as well. I can also adjust the size of the area if I want to. And I think that's looking much better. Now I'm just going to double click the hand icon to go back to full screen. And the next thing I'm going to do is add a vignette just to darken the corners down slightly and draw the eye into the image. So I'm going to go to the lens correction panel here and I want to click on the manual tab. Then in the lens vignetting settings here, I'm going to bring amount back to minus 15 and set the midpoint to about 40, I think. You can see that just gives me slightly darkened corners. Finally, I'm going to use the detail panel here to add some sharpening. I'm just going to double click the zoom tool to go to 100% and then just drag around to find an area so I can use to judge the sharpening effect. And I'm going to set the amount slider to about 49, and this sets the overall strength of the sharpening. The radius slider, I'm going to bring that up to 1.2, and this sets the area around the edges that the sharpening effect is applied to. I'm going to leave detail at 25, and I can use the masking slider to mask the sharpening effect from certain areas of the image. And this is easier to see if I go back to full screen. So I'm just going to double click the hand tool and then I'm going to hold alt and drag the masking slider. And you can see this gives me a view of the image where as I drag more areas begin to turn black and these areas are being masked from the sharpening effect. So this is quite useful for landscapes because we don't really want to apply sharpening to that smooth sky there. We only really want to apply it to the detail over the land. So I'm going to set the masking to about 25. And I'm just going to finally add a touch of noise reduction. So I'm going to zoom back in and we'll bring the luminance slider up to about 18. And I'm happy with how my image is looking now. So. I'm going to go to save image here at the bottom left and this gives me my save options so I can choose to select a folder and a file type so if we save as a DNG then this is a universal raw format so I'm just going to save as a DNG and give it a name we'll call it field and then click save and there we go that's our finished image thanks very much for watching